Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me well. Thank you very much for attending our webinar. Just gonna let you, uh, I'll begin in 10 seconds. All right, well, hello city colleagues. Today's webinar is presented by Alex Valdivia, Claudia Batres Flores, and myself, Gabriel Bautista, from the Legal Processing Unit. The purpose is to provide a general overview of the common legal documents that may impact your retirement, including dissolution of marriage, community property claims, income withholding orders for child or spousal support, legal authorities, documents such as power of attorney and domestic partnerships. Before we begin, we'd like to inform you of the following. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the LACERS YouTube channel. This presentation is also intended to provide a summary of the benefits established by the Los Angeles City Charter, Los Angeles Administrative Code, and LACERS Board Rules, referred to as the Plan Provisions. In the event of discrepancies in this presentation, the plan provisions will govern at all times. Furthermore, LACERS representatives cannot offer financial, legal, or tax advice. Please consult with your financial planner, attorney, or tax advisor accordingly. Lastly, as a governed entity under Title II of the Americans with Disability Act, the City of Los Angeles does not discriminate on the basis of disability and upon request will provide reasonable accommodations to ensure equal access to its programs, services, and activities. The first topic applies to all city employees that have been divorced. At retirement, all city employees are required to provide a conformed copy of their dissolution of marriage or divorce decree. If you don't provide a copy, here are two reasons why you might want to send a copy before you retire. Reason number one, if we cannot determine your lawful marital status upon retirement, it will delay your retirement. Reason number two, if you misplaced your judgment and it takes you three months to request a duplicate from the court, it will delay your retirement until you have served us with a conformed copy. A conformed copy is a true and exact copy of the original document, which will include a filed stamp, the judge's signature, and all attached pages. For your convenience, being displayed as a blank sample judgment of dissolution of marriage, if your divorce took place in the state of California. The form is typically FL 180 and your conformed copy should have a filed stamp, the judge's signature and include all the attached pages. As a courtesy, I'm going to zoom in on the form. I'm just gonna highlight the sections first. This is the form number. This is where the filed stamp would be. This is where the judge's signature would typically be. And these are the attached pages. So I'm going to zoom in right now. Now I'll repeat myself. So I highlighted on the top right hand corner FL 180, which is the typical form number. And then underneath it, that's where the typical conform filed stamp would be on the first page. And then on the second page at the bottom left, on the bottom right hand side would be where the uh, judge's signature would typically be. 
if your judgment includes attachments, it would be indicated on number five, and there would be X number of pages there. We would need all of those pages. If you misplaced your judgment and your divorce took place in the county of Los Angeles, you can request a duplicate conformed copy by contacting the Los Angeles County Superior Court Archives and Records Center or by calling them at the number displayed, area code 213-830-0198 you can also email them at arcdocs at lacourt.org. If your divorce occurred outside of the county of Los Angeles, then you should contact the appropriate county court office or your attorney. The next topic is community property. The California code and case law are the authorities that establish community interest in a LACERS member's retirement benefit. Retirement benefits accrued during the marital period may be subject to division due to divorce, legal separation, or dissolution of a state registered domestic partnership. If your judgment establishes that your ex-spouse is awarded their share of your LACERS retirement benefits, we will withhold their share. If the plan is served with a notice of adverse interest, LACERS is also required to withhold their share pursuant to the California Family Code law. Furthermore, if the plan is served with a court ordered joinder, the joinder is a notice of adverse interest and LACERS is required to withhold their share, which is also again, pursuant to the California Family Code Law. However, before LACERS can disperse payment of the withheld community property benefit, the plan requires a final court order designating the method for dividing the community property interest. Typically, this court order is called the Qualified Domestic Relations Order. The acronym is QUADRO, which is Q-D-R-O. If there are deviations from the withheld amounts to the method in the final court order, we will make the appropriate retroactive changes as of the date of withholding. If you and your ex-spouse agree on a settlement to terminate the community property claim, you'll need to provide us with a conformed copy of that settlement. Lastly, please note, all court orders are reviewed by the Office of the City Attorney prior to the administration of benefits. I would like to conclude my portion by reminding you that these court orders are between you and your ex-spouse they are entered in court, signed by you, signed by your ex-spouse, and signed by the judge. Up next is Alex Valdivia, who will go over the typical withholding methodology and other court orders that may impact your retirement. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay, I'll go over the how the community property claim may impact your LACERS retirement. And then, um, so in most cases, the court awards the, uh, your ex-spouse, the non-member, a portion of the retirement as their sole on separate property. Now, we commonly get questions from members who say, well, you know, I thought since I was only married for 10 years, then shouldn't my ex-spouse only get a benefit for say five years for half the time? And unfortunately, the answer to that question is no, because the uh, how the five years comes into uh, 
as a factor is that the five years is used as a, a percentage. So it takes the five years divided by the, the total city service years. And then it takes that percentage to determine the percentage that goes to the ex-spouse. And typically uh, this is a permanent percentage. So just as your percentage is a monthly benefit, it's a lifetime pension, then the, the other percentage to the non-member is also a, a monthly pension. It's a lifetime benefit for their lifetime. Um, and there's two ways that the retirement could be split. The most common way is the in-kind method, which was what I was just discussing. It's the five years, the five-year example. It takes the number of years of marriage that divides it by the total city service years, and it takes that percentage. Um, whereas the other method is called a separate account method. And in that, we we'll look at the same marriage period, so if we said 10 years, half of that is five years. In this case, the member would actually lose the five years of service credit and the contributions accrued during that time. And then um, those would be placed into the non-member's account. The difference is with this option, the member would have the option to buy that time back if they had qualified money and say deferred comp or another qualified retirement plan. Next slide, please. So here's an example of an in-kind method split, which is um, usually it's 50% of the, the marital period. And then in this example, so for a 12-year marriage within a 30-year city career, and then a uh, LACERS retirement benefit of 5,000 before any reductions. The typical formula for the in-kind is takes the 12 years of marriage, divides it by the 30 years of service credit to get 0.4. And then usually with a 50% split, the member and the non-member divided half and half. So the 0.4 becomes 0.2 for each member and non-member. And then that portion multiplied by the 5,000 results in a $1,000 community property reduction. And that's the amount that goes to the non-member. The member is left with 4,000. So you could look at it and say that's a 20%. In this example, for these numbers, 20% goes to the non-member and 80% goes to the member. And with the separate account split, it's the same numbers, it's the same methodology, However, it's only looking at the actual time during the marriage. So in this case, if it's a 12 year marriage, then it takes half of that, which is six years. And the member would lose six years of service credit and any contributions and interest accrued during that, those six years. And then they would have the option to buy that time back. So, next slide, please. So moving on to wage garnishments. Um, wage garnishments refer to child support, spousal support, IRS tax levies, and some student loans. And these may be applied to the retirement. So if a LACERS member has either current child support or child support arrears, and if LACERS is served with a court order, then we may be required, or we will be required to garnish uh, the amount. And typically these are up to 50% of the disposable income. However, they may go up to 65% in some cases if they're specifically ordered by the court. And um, IRS tax levies, they can deduct more than 50% they can take a large amount of the member's benefit and they can leave the member with just the, the exempt amount. Next slide, please. In addition to the, um, the wage garnishments, so they can also be applied to LACERS benefits that already have community property. So for example, 
it's possible to have masonry's community property, meaning part of their retirement goes to the ex-spouse. And then in addition, it's also possible to have child support and spousal support. Um, usually the community property takes precedence, so that part is removed first. And then from whatever is remaining, then only up to half of that could be taken for either child or spousal support. And again, usually these don't exceed 50% unless uh, the specific court order orders it to be up to 65%. And typically these wage garnishment deductions continue indefinitely they, until the obligation is completed. Um, for more specific information regarding these, then you, you may refer to the uh, divorce decree or the income withholding order, or you may also contact your local child support office. And this is a link for the LA County child support office Additionally, if, if it was in a different county, you can go to child support for that specific county, and then you can um, for more information to contact them. And now I'll pass it on to Claudia to discuss the Lacers Durable Power of Attorney. Thank you, Alex. Good morning, my name is Claudia. Um, and so as mentioned, I'll be talking to you about the Lacers Special Durable Power of Attorney. The LACER Special Durable Power of Attorney, or POA, is a legal document wherein you can designate an agent or someone also called your attorney of fact or AIF, all interchangeable terms, and this person designated will act on your behalf on matters relating to your LACER's benefit. This document is provided to all LACER's members free of cost. It does not have to, uh, it does however have to be witnessed or notarized, the member's signature does, so if you choose to have it notarized, um, then that would be the only cost to you as the member. Next slide, please. The LACER Special Durable Power of Attorney is available online to you at our website, lacers.org. And you can find that and all our other documents and forms under forms and info sheets. Along with the Power of Attorney document, you'll also find a fact sheet which contains frequently asked questions, as well as a step-by-step -step instructions um, in the form of a PowerPoint on how to fill out the document. Any additional questions or concerns can be, re uh, can be answered by reaching out to the legal processing unit, and we're available via phone or email. We are more than happy to assist you on how to properly fill out the document. But as this is a legal document and it is not a requirement for retirement, um, it is a rather a very personal option, which is offered to our members. Um, for that reason, we cannot advise you on what options to choose. We can only inform you on what all the options are. So please take the time to read the document thoroughly prior to completing and submitting your power of attorney document for review. As a reminder, it is a legal document and you are providing someone authority over your LACERS benefit. Next slide, please. So other legal authority documents for LACERS benefit purposes. Meaning if you already have an existing power of attorney document, which you would like to submit to LACERS, you can go ahead and submit that to us for review. We do accept those as well. You do not have to fill out a LACERS power attorney document if you already have an existing one. Your current existing one, perhaps it's part of a trust, um, you can submit that to us. Uh, any other legal authority documents such as conservatorships or guardianships, these are court ordered documents. Um, those documents as well as any power of attorney document must be submitted to the Lacer City Attorney's Office for review and approval. This review process with the City Attorney's Office can take up to a month. Um, so once you submit it to, the, to Lacer's Legal Processing Unit, we will then review it and submit it further to the city attorney's office for further review. Again, it can take up to a month. So please keep that in mind on whether or not you'd like to have a power of attorney on file. Um, it does take some time to get that process going and to have that, uh, that power of attorney document active and in your file for your agent to be able to act on your behalf. Um, so as I did mention, we do accept power of attorney documents outside of the LACER special durable one. 
However, if you have a power of attorney for healthcare or a healthcare directive, we cannot accept those as they are not usable for LACERS purposes, for LACERS benefit purposes. Um, those are strictly for healthcare benefit, uh, purposes. Next slide, please. So we're gonna, we're gonna move on to domestic partnerships now. In order for you to establish a domestic partnership with LACERS, you have to first file a declaration of domestic partnership with LACERS, meaning you have to file our own form with us. And this form, as I mentioned, can be found on the website and with our other forms at lacers.org under the forms and info sheet links. Alternatively, if you already have a state registered domestic partnership with the state of California, you can also submit that copy to us and we will go ahead and place that on file. Um, however, if you have uh, any other type of domestic partnership filed, whether it be with uh, employee benefits, or elsewhere, we still require our own uh, LACERS document to be filled out and submitted. Next slide, please. Domestic partner eligibil eligibility. As far as eligibility of your domestic partner goes, the LACERS declaration of domestic partnership, our own LACERS form, or a state registered domestic partnership must be filed with us at least 12 months prior to retirement. So a year prior to retirement, you have to submit that form to us. Um, and this 12 months is in order for your partner to be eligible for a continuance benefit. Again, filing a declaration of domestic partnership with employee benefits alone, so with, your, with the personnel department, um, that is not sufficient to cover the administration of benefits with LACERS. Please be sure to fill out the LACERS declaration of domestic partnership. Now, in order for your domestic partner to receive a survivorship, they must be designated as your sole primary beneficiary. So it is important to always keep your beneficiary forms up to date. Next slide, please. Termination of domestic partnership. A LACERS domestic partnership may be terminated by submitting a LACERS termination of domestic partnership form. You must include documentation with the form as required by the form and that's all uh, detailed and lined out in the form for you. And the form, of course, can again be found on our website, lasers.org, under forms and info sheets. If your domestic partnership was filed with the state of California and you want to terminate that one, then you must contact the Office of the Secretary of the State to file a, termination, a notice of termination of domestic partnership or petition a dissolution of domestic partnership with the court. Once that's done, you must then provide LACERS with proof of termination or dissolution from your state for us to have on file. Now, also another thing to note is that a new declaration of domestic partnership cannot be filed with LACERS for at least six months after the filing date of a termination of domestic partnership. So once you terminate a domestic partnership, you have to wait six months before you can enter into a new domestic partnership with LACERS. Next slide, please. So that concludes our presentation for the legal processing unit. And there are a variety of ways in which you can contact LACERS and the legal processing unit, um, which are shown here on this slide. We're available via phone, mail, email. You can get more information on our website, um, as well as submit your documents on our website through a document upload. We have a variety of YouTube videos available for your viewing with a lot of information. And we are now open by appointment only, and you have to register your appointment 24 hours in advance. Um, and those are 15 minute appointments within our office in order, and the purpose of them is to pick up or drop off uh, documents or forms. Uh, and at any time you can contact the legal processing unit, we'd be more than happy to assist you with any questions that you may have. Next slide, please. So again, thank you for attending this webinar, for viewing it online. Um, we do have a Q&A feature which you can submit any questions through and we'll give it a few, um, uh, we'll give it a few seconds, like a minute or so to see if there's any questions. Um, if there isn't, then we will go ahead and wrap up. And once again, I just wanna thank you on behalf of the Legal Processing Unit, Gabriel Bautista, Alex Valdivia, and myself, Claudia Batasoy. Thank you.
All right, so if there aren't any questions at this moment, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that up. Again, thank you everyone. Um, and we are always available as mentioned for any questions um, or additional information that you may need. Have a great day.